okay let's continue where we left off in the first video okay so so f okay so we discuss about like uh, how splunk time picker behaves by default now we will modify that one so do that first i will add a drop down so why i am adding this one because i need to i will create this drop down to list out all my date fields okay now the idea is to i will choose the date field and i will choose the time and and splunk will basically filter our dashboard data based on that chosen date field so i will edit this one let's give this one filter by this is the name of this one this drop down token let's say filter by now static option as this will be a static drop down because i have only two date fields over there one is created date let me copy it the value will be created date only and now resolve date the value will be the name is the displayed name so you can give created date the value will be the column name or the token name basically by or the field splunk field name by which the data will be uh, the, the the data will be refreshed or the value will or better you can say uh, if you choose created date splunk will internally use created underscore date as a value of it so resolved it okay so this is my drop down nothing is there so by default i'll choose created date apply so this is my drop down now be before we modify any code let us see when we choose something from the time picker how the time picker has Time picker has two values basically: the earliest date and the latest date. If you see here in the code, so if you see, I, if when I click on edit, Splunk give me two options to edit it. Either you can edit through UI, or you can edit through the source XML. So if each and every Splunk uh, dashboard can be built on either on XML and JavaScript. or you can fully build on html there you have more control over there so as this is a very uh, normal uh, simple exercise so i have chosen simple xml to to show you so now if you see this time token has two values one is earliest value and another is latest value so each and every time picker has these two tokens and when you add this in a earliest and latest tag in your search your search basically go by this value chosen here okay so now i'll add one table to show token values we'll explain why i have i'm creating this one Let's say make results make results is a splunk command by which you can create rows dummy rows maybe i can show you here if i give make results by default it creates an row with a date current date okay if you give make result count equals to 4 it creates four rows this is very handy because when when you want to check check on something you you can create your own data based based, based on this make make results command okay so now i'll say make results then i'll give eval time token earliest equals to 
the value of it if you see the time token value is okay let, let me add it here then i'll edit it from the xml it will be easier for us to edit okay now from the source see when i added the table splunk created a new row and a new panel on that it it created that table now i'll say eval it is the same thing when in the, from the ui in the query box you are writing the query here in the xml there will be a search tag there will be a query tag so time token earliest is equals to this time token earliest value and eval time token latest is equals to time token latest value i'll explain why i am doing this one no. table time token earliest time token latest save okay let me refresh the dashboard Let me see what's going on there. Okay. Sometimes you need to have this one because there will be space or you will be failing. If you see here, for all time, the earliest time is zero, latest time is nothing. Mm. Now, I'll choose something. Let's say last sixty minutes. There will be no data for tickets because all my data is from uh, before before June. Mm. So if you see the time token, earliest value is sixty minute M, and latest value is now. If you choose something like real time five minutes window, okay, make results will not be supported, or maybe I'll choose something previous week. See, it is a different format at the rate W zero at the rate W zero seven day, and if I choose some date range. Six seventeen apply. It it is giving me some numeric values. That is the epoch format of the date. It is Unix format. If you are aware about Unix epoch format, uh, it's basically Unix way to pro, uh, represent time and date. So now, if you see the Sp Splunk time picker earliest and latest value have different formats now why i am discussing this one because now to modify this time picker behavior this is the logic or this is the strategy we are going to follow let me explain to you here so time picker will have an earliest value and will have a latest value this is basically the date range now if i want to go by any of the time field my logic will be 
that time field should be between these two values time field value. So, that means my date field value should fall bit fall values should fall between this two then on uh, then only it will be selected otherwise not but to do that you need to normalize this time so th there is only one way you can do normalization that is converting all this time into epoch time epoch format this is epoch this is epoch so if i convert all these three times into epoch format then I can do the add the logic or do the comparison and then accordingly I can write it out. But if you see there as I show you just now time picker ha is giving me different different formats different different times. So, that means and you can only convert to epoch time when you know the format there is a Splunk function called strp time which is basically converts the, the dates to epoch for epo epoch time, but to, to do the conversion it needs to know the date format. Let me see if we are we are already crossing 10 minutes let me continue in the next video. Thank you.